Hello there, Flight Humans, and welcome to another shop review. Is there anything worth buying and what you should definitely avoid? Let's have a look. In the resource section, we have credits, which is not cool. And then we have the, for example, Victor's Might package right here, which is 8,000 gold and 30 times 5. 30 times 5 is plenty to grind at least one tech tree fully if you play it decently well. And 8,000 gold is enough to get yourself one great tier 8 premium tank. That is going to get you all your credit grinding needs that you would ever want. So just like this can be worth it. And then in the tank section, and I find this hilarious because we start off pretty well and then it gets really bad. Now, the concept won't be for 20k in this bundle. Yes, I think quite good. You even get 30 days of premium in here. Uh, times fives are unfortunately locked, but here you have these old boosters that are very good. So this is a good bundle for a very good vehicle. It's one of the better tier 10 collectors. Obviously, it's not the greatest of vehicles that ever exist for making credits. Because that's what you get at tier 8. But this is a very formidable tier 10. Can definitely rival the E5, if not a little bit better. So if you've played the T125 before, then this can be a great choice to pick up. Because here we have 20k gold. Bundle is filled with great stuff. And we have a very good tank right here. This is a good offer. The anime tanks are already indefensible because of their special unique crew voice that is uh, ear-killing at best. The Shaw Future is hilariously overpriced for how much it's worth. It caught like 20k gold for the Shaw Future, 20k gold for the Concept 1B. I mean, a mediocre tier 9 versus one of the best tier 10s. Yeah, you, you see why I don't like. Yeah. Invisible Menace, 11k for two tier 8 tank destroyers. Just. Absolutely no. I mean, th there are people out there that like the TS5. You may comment now, but no, don't buy this under any circumstances unless you really like the TS5, in which case... I believe now I know why volunteers and in tears. Then we have the T95 E6 right here, which is also a very solid vehicle. It is only for higher skilled players, in my opinion. If you're not that good, then first of all, you shouldn't tone a T10 collector. And the Concept 1B is the better vehicle and the better bundle all round for everybody. But if you are a good player that likes to flaunt their skill, then this can be a very good heavy M to pull off. It's got more DPM, it's got better mobility, it doesn't really have any armor to speak of, but it can be very useful. For example, 10 degrees of gun depression as well. Very good at that. So now, let's move on. Yeah. 30 euros for, well, essentially ear pain, because these vehicles have a special crew voice that you should never listen to. Cringe Lord. You don't get them. And then here we have the Impeccable and Ruthless. There's two tier 7s. Well, the Kunze Panzer was given away for free at some point, so no value there. And the at 15 a is a very special vehicle, as in you have to be very special to enjoy it, just like the TS-5. That's just how I am. I'm sadistic. The vehicle is good at what it does, but you have to enjoy what it does to do well. It's just like the TS-5. Like, they have certain merits that they're good at, but only a very small amount of the Watt Blitz player base is going to enjoy them. And unless you know that you're going to enjoy it, and you've already played, for example, the 183 tech tree, and you really liked the playstyle of an AT-8 and an AT-15, then this can be an addition for you. But otherwise, if you've never played a vehicle like that, then just stay away from it entirely. And obviously we have the FCM here. And down here, don't forget to open your free containers and then the send lag. <laughs> this is just hilarious. Like, this vehicle wasn't a terrible pay-to-win event a couple of months ago, and it was not good then, and now they put it in crates on its own. I guess trying to pretend that's a new vehicle when it is absolutely not. This is a terrible tank. Like, this is one of those vehicles that you chuck into the shop for five, 6,000 gold and hope that someone gets it. But here is it for crates, but... As it goes for crates, well, I ha don't have control over your money. I can just say that uh, if you spend your money on crates that aren't free, then you're most likely, mathematically, going to lose money. Buying crates is dumb. You choose what you do with that information. Speaking of dumb, I don't think I have to tell you that this is a bad idea. So um, let's move on very quickly to the next draw, the awesome draw, which has 51 stages. If you ever have a gambling addiction, then please don't do that in Blitz, because this is insane. Like, it's getting insane how many tiers there are, and there are multiple one gold stages here, stage for, like, 30, 36. There are multiple bait stages for one gold in here. 
which makes it seem cheaper. So, no, this ain't no good. I mean, the Grand Surprise containers, they're still hilariously OP, essentially, but there aren't any in here that are valuable. There's only five in here, and the rest of them are garbage. So, and there's even five animated avatar containers, which have a negative value, essentially. So, in my opinion, at least. So, um, yeah. Then you have the premium pass. We got the Kiho, which you can sell for gold, which is kind of what it's worth. And, uh, yeah, that's the same as always. You shouldn't ever do that. But you have the vaults in here that you can, once again, collect gold credits. So, if you are a regular player, even though... The battle passes are now slightly less valuable than they used to be at the start of the battle passes. They're still a good value if you play regularly, which means if you can fill level 60 and you can fill the vaults organically without playing extra just for the sake of the battle pass, then the premium pass is still going to be worth it. Because then you're going to get a lot of useful rewards in here. Obviously, you're also going to get a lot of camouflages that are camouflage, but... It will get things like discounts, tank research certificates. That can be very useful. The only thing really worth considering is the Concept 1B this week. And it is worth quite a consideration because you get 20k for the whole bundle. Which is pretty solid. It's cheaper than the Object 777 bundle. And I believe this is somewhat of a better vehicle for the playstyle that it has. Obviously, you can't directly compare them, but in terms of relative playstyle, I think this is a good vehicle, nonetheless. So, what is level here is that the team, the mediums, they're actually not going to the heavy side. So, that actually helps everyone quite a lot. Now, this vehicle... Um, oh, yeah, okay. Anyway, that, that just happened. So, this vehicle has quite a well-rounded personality, I'd say. Now, the biggest problem with it is the very long turret. Which means that whenever you turn the turret, it can be very easily penned, but the front of the turret is essentially impenetrable if you face the enemy on directly. Is he insane? Yes. So... Okay, we're gonna have to hold this guy, and hello, guys, this th we have to, like... What the hell? Okay. <laughs> what the... What is going on in this game? Jesus. Okay. But yeah, we have 3000 3, DPM, 250 penetration. I personally use Calibrated on this vehicle, I don't know why. But it has heat as a premium ammo, so you can get that extra penetration out of it for heavy tanks and can be quite useful. You only gain about 200 DPM from the um, yeah, gun rammer in this case, so not really that great. But yeah, you have 380 alpha damage, which is less than what the regular American heavies have at 400. Uh, but you have very good accuracy. You still got your 10 degrees of gun depression. Obviously, you can't win a gun depression fight against the absolute god of gun depression, which is the STB-1. And uh, you can't really do much when the entirety of your team camps at the corner. But, uh, yeah, the mobility in this thing, eh, it's not that great. It could be better. But it is a very well-rounded vehicle. So it's definitely worth a look. And now I'm going to have to probably die to the STB. And like, he can shoot the Coppola. He has a ridiculous amount of gun depression. And I have a Coppola all the way at the back that... It's very hard to hit, but the STB can do that anyway, in this case. Let's try to get some shots here and turn around immediately because the side of the turret is very weak and very large. I'm going to have to hope that, yep, that guy goes down and now maybe peek the guy. I mean, he has a Coppola on the side that I could pen, but I don't have the armor to deal with that because he can pen that thing all day long. And he can even shoot down to the lower plate because his gun depression is absolutely mental. So, yeah, help. Please. Yeah, but he doesn't have the alpha damage to quite do that. Yeah. I mean, it's 3v5. I don't think there's much chance here to go on. And, uh... Yeah. Which I can do about that thing. Essentially. Which is kind of sad. Yeah, I tried. Now, Yeguru is the only thing that's kind of keeping that guy behind. I could peek the type, but then I'm going to die to the STB, so I can't do that. Can't even take out the gun here. So that's a bit of a struggle. And obviously, that 183 YOLOing me at the start was bit detrimental to my hit points but uh let's now see what's gonna happen i'm just trying to peek the 183 here and get some free extra shots i'm just gonna have to be careful because the stb can rush me here but uh let's see what we can do which is probably nothing now, that doesn't mean the tank's not worth buying because it definitely still is i'm gonna die yeah, it's just gonna shoot me in the lower play hello yeguru oh never mind <laughs> well that's 3,000 damage anyway <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious, but let's play another one. Now, game number two in the Concept 1B. This is good. The enemy had kind of given up the 
most important position of the game here and uh, the T100 LT is just snooping around over there now I'm just gonna do something dumb and I'm gonna push here because if I can get down there go around get the E100 right the other guys are gonna attack the E100 from the front I can attack him from behind open two avenues of fire which means he's gonna be unable to defend himself in any direction really um, and now then he's gonna die and that's already one gun down which is very nice now we're probably gonna lose the, that tank destroyer over there because he's playing the city which, uh, <laughs> people these days going city and he's dead there we go let's go we kind of traded that e100 out Just works fine now we're gonna go up there and fight that 183 after the last game i kind of feel feel i need to take my revenge on any 183 i see but uh how did you how did you bottle that one that was impressive okay i can use that as a shield i can use the 4005 as a meat shield here you probably shouldn't use a paper tank as a meat shield but hey it's not my hit points and now I'm going to go through to the side, try to play that angle. Oh, so try to get into a position where I can get the most damage possible. But this enemy team is in an absolutely horrible position, which means they're going to lose very easily. So don't be this enemy team. Don't play like that. Actually, play the good side of the map, because then this won't happen to you. All right, it's now only three guys left alive. It's very nice. Now, sometimes your team's too good to do high damage, but that doesn't really matter. Having fun. That matters. Let's see what we can do here. Do -do -do -do. Six threads, obviously not gonna have a great time. Just gonna face like a He can still sort of pen me. Not quite, but if I get close enough, he can't pen me anymore. Like that. T100 is behind me now. He's very horny. He's gonna try to run. 62A is also gonna try to run. I'm gonna focus on the 62A for now. Take that out. And now this guy is gonna go down to the full thousand five. There we go. Seven what? Two and a half minutes. Ain't that just a lovely game? That is so much fun. Well, calls it 1B. I think it's worth it. But you have to know what to buy, what your budget is. But I think if the concept 1B is within the means of your budget, it can be worth it. And if you like the playstyle of the vehicle, of course.